Hey, you all, Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from an undisclosed location. We are here outside of the Ripley's headquarters in an unknown city. <laughs> and um, I've been invited to come back to the warehouse and take a little peek at what's going on. So hopefully we'll get a little behind the scenes peek at what is percolating here at Ripley's. Maybe see some crazy things that, uh, that they, they are hiding here at their headquarters. It's all, I would love, love Ripley's, love everything Ripley's, so it's a, it's a treat to be able to come back here uh, and check out the warehouse. So please, follow me. Spider-Man made of buttons. I don't know what don't know what this contraption here does, but it looks really cool. And look, look how long this deer is. That is a long deer. So this is actually really cool. Um, this is ac this was a shoe that was actually in the belly of a crocodile. Uh, the story, it's a little bit of a long story, but if you condense it, um, there is an alligator farm in St. Augustine, and they have a zip lining experience where you can zip line over a bunch of alligators, yeah. crocodiles. Yeah, I've actually been, I've, I've not, You've been there. I've not done zip lining, but I've been to the, been to the attraction. To, to the alligator farm, yeah. okay? So somebody lost a shoe while zip lining over the crocodile uh, enclosure. And the crocodile ate it, and they couldn't get it out of his, out of him. They took him. They ended up having to have a bunch of vets come in and uh, right, remove right, the shoe. And uh, yeah, this is kind of my favorite picture out of all of them because before they actually went in and surgically removed the shoe, I mean, they tried. Oh, okay, so this guy's he's, got his. He's, 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 just, he's shoulder deep. Shoulder deep in a crocodile. He's mouth. shoulder deep. In hoping a that anesthesia right holds up. Yeah, exactly. Well, they did need to actually surgically remove the shoe, uh, which is right there. Um, the shoe was donated to us from the. St. Augustine Wildlife, or, or from the uh, uh, alligator farm, um, and uh, it's just got a great story behind it. That is. I mean, uh, yeah, my, my first question was going to be, did the did they just eat the shoe, or did it eat the, the fur? <laughs> was there a leg attached? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the crocodile did survive, 100% survived. Oh, that's awesome. It's actually already back in the container, already back in the pen with the other crocodiles and everything like that, totally successful. Our department every year tries to do approximately yeah. three figures. Yeah. You know, we have three wax museums, I'm sure you've been to all yeah. of them, you know. Uh, I don't need to go over those. Yeah, Louis Tussauds, uh, uh, those are the ones that we own. So because we have three of those every year, it's uh, approximately nine figures. You know, three figures times three museums yeah. is nine. Uh, so this is one of our new ones for this year. So we decided to go ahead and do the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Uh, ultimately, when this is going to be on display, we do see him on like a small set of steps. Okay, so he's like that, doing the, that the jump, the jump down the the steps. Exactly, yeah. down those iconic New York steps and everything like that. So and this is one of our warehouses. We call this Warehouse One. This is very much the uh, the act of loading and unloading zone, right? So this mm -hmm. is where everything's gonna, that is going to be moving. Fairly soon. Oh wow! Is going to be in here. So uh, actually, we have another location opening up here shortly. Um, I can't tell you where yet, but so a lot of stuff you're going to see is really compacted and it's it's shipped. This is an animal. This is an animal <laughs> animal gallery. So this is actually a six-legged cow. Okay. And you can tell that by uh, by up here. Okay. Right here, and you've got another leg right here as well. Oh, amazing. Um, I'm sure you, most people, especially your followers, know this, but. Uh, uh, if a cow's got an extra limb, it's gonna live a long, happy, yeah. long and ha ha happy <laughs> life. Uh, the limbs are no problems. Once you start getting into the split faces or the two-headed calves or things like that, that's when that they cause complications. Little... Yeah, they don't last very long, unfortunately. Uh, but the if it's just an extra limb, they'll live. They'll live a full, long, healthy life. So uh, obviously, warehouse. Um, this is the paper chain. Did you see the paper chain the last time? No, I did not. So this is actually really cool, and this is. <laughs> this is a very small amount of the paper chain. There are actually uh, approximately 20 spools that it filled. Um, there is a guy in North Carolina, his name is Butch Baker, um, and this is his paper chain. Every day for 30 years, 
when he sat down at, and just to watch TV, he decided that he would do that typical gum wrapper style yeah. chain, you know? Um, so none of this has glue or staples or anything in These this. All he did this folded. all for 30 years and then gave it to Ripley's, believe it or not. Uh, it obviously is spooled up here, right? Uh, to our best guesstimate, um, based off of, uh, we did actually measure it. Um, we think it's just over 25 miles long. Oh, wow. uh, um, and obviously he's been working on it for 30 years. And it doesn't even look like the spools are all packed up. You can see here we've got six of them, but then over there we've oh my got gosh, another, yeah, another nine, nine over and there. And then another down, way down there at the end, or another at least six way down there at the end. So I mean, we were there for a week. So we had a group of guys there. So just taking it, like just taking it and just pulling it through the window. Pulling it through the window, and then there was another guy on the outside that had the spool, and there was a couple of guys trying to stay ahead of it in case there were minor breaks or something yeah. like that, and it was just whoosh, out wow. as quickly as we could get it. Now this, I, I'm gonna try to test my knowledge sure. here. Sure. This was in Key West, right? Absolutely it was. Yes, it was. It's actually right in front of you is another one that, we, that came from Key West. Can't probably tell what it is because it's all wrapped up. Is this up. A, a hammerhead shark? This is, the, uh, uh, this is a hammerhead shark. Yeah. Yes, we're combining palettes. But the <laughs> thing that was in, uh, in uh, uh, Key West is this here. This is the kite boat that was on display. The kite boat, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We did just oh. get a large uh, shipment of wax heads in. Some we did heads. a full round of all of our wax museums and we decided which ones were time to retire. Uh, Lisa retired? Yeah, or, or they need enough work that yeah. we deemed that they needed to be pulled. They're just not at our standards anymore. So uh, so there's a possibility that we're gonna fix them up and they're gonna go back. Uh, there's a possibility they may just be retired. A lot of them. They're gonna, go, they're gonna go live on a farm where our old retired wax yes, heads Yes, live. yeah, yeah. No, where all the old wax heads go. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> you know? Obviously we got Robert Waldo over here, the world's tallest man back behind you. Wadlow. Yep, that's one of the animatronic ones that stands, stands up. Yeah. We are definitely um, we're loading a container on Monday to, oh. to to ship all this out. So there's it's kind of the mad dash to an undis uh, to an undisclosed location. Yes, I can tell you it is international. International. Okay. We have an international franchise opening up. So I'll tell you that. It's a little our lovely two headed calf. calves here. I can pr I'm pretty sure this guy was not here last time you were the giraffe. Here. No, this I don't remember him. Foot giraffe. So this is pretty cool. It is uh, a, a giraffe. There's not anything particularly over the top, believe it or not, about it, except for how tall it is, you know? Uh, but uh, this was actually uh, next to a guy's swimming pool in South Florida. Uh, I actually broke my finger removing this guy from this guy's house. Oh no! Uh, I can laugh about it now. It wasn't funny at the moment. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, we don't want anybody to hurt any of these animals to become part of our collection. Yeah. So this was also one that we know was sourced ethically, yeah. right? Ripley's never wants any animals harmed, in, uh, you know, to become part of the collection. And so, so that's a big part of this and one of the reasons why we went ahead and got this too. Because now this is, this is a classic item here. Absolutely. This is the, you recognize him as our original camera. The original couple. camera guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Back when I was visiting the Ripley's as a young kid, <laughs> this is what I would walk in front of. Uh, we got the old man and the old woman. Hey, what's this? I don't recognize you. What, what is this? Oh, this old thing. Yeah. That, <laughs> I remember using cameras I, I remember, like that. I remember that. The only thing that would have made it better is if it was a disposable camera. Yeah. <laughs> week or so this will be very empty or a lot more empty of what it is but all this is getting ready to be loaded up we've got a, a container going out literally uh, on Monday so, uh, Monday, so yeah this is what I Monday, guess Tuesday. this is what it looks like when a new Ripley's is born yes you know? <laughs> yes that's exactly what it is yep so this is the final stage obviously that goes through a lot before that design and approvals and all sorts of stuff but you are correct this is this is the last step. Things are packed and they are being loaded into a container to be shipped. What with these uh, three Walter Hudsons? Oh, right our there. Walter Hudsons. We love them. <laughs> love them, love them. Oh, look at all the look at all these heads. Art, this this is actually one of my favorite areas. <laughs> this is the this is the wall of, of wax. Heads. Oh, is that an alien right there? Absolutely. That's cool. We actually have one of the seven dwarves aliens. right there. Yep. So this is uh, our wall of wax heads, and, and this is kind of a little bit of a smorgasbord of everything. There's a combination of some master heads on here. If we ever needed another yeah, one, we yeah. could take a mold and then, and then make them. Some of them have just been retired from Ripley's Museums. Originally, back in the day, the Ripley's Museums would have true wax figures. Now, we have two different things. We've got Ripley's, believe it or not, and then we have the wax museums. Yeah. 
The wax museums is wax. 100%, it's a wax museum. Back in the day, the Ripley's characters used to be made out of wax too, because yeah. that's just what it was. We learned that they just don't hold up, right? The, the, the they got worn stuff. down. Exactly. So some of these are old Ripley figures that have been retired just because they've been transitioned to plastic, right? Which is a lot more durable. That's really creepy right there. <laughs> we have every once in a while I'll open a box that says like torture victim or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and it's all it always gets me. <laughs> The guy with crocodile dentures. Oh, yep, yep. Croc Tooth Man, we call him. Wadlow. So that's a Robert Wadlow Masterhead. So okay. anytime we have to, uh, uh, we have a mold at this point for Robert Wadlow, but if for some reason that mold were to ever disappear, we could make another one off of the master copy. And then, like I said, uh, this has been more master copy storage, especially down here towards the end. So you're going to see a, a, a few more of our ones that have been poured up in uh, clay. Obviously, we've got Robert Wadlow. That's short E dangerously oh, next yeah, to yeah. him, right? Uh, next to that would be Ray from Star Wars. I got Daniel Craig next, I believe. Biden, George Bush. Meghan Markle. And oh, that's, that's interesting. Biden without hair there. Yeah. And I believe the one all the way down here is Jennifer Lawrence. So we do every president. Uh, we Our wax museums yeah. have presidential galleries. So it doesn't matter who wins. <laughs> they're going to go ahead and they're going to get a figure. Here's the art department. I know you've seen this a uh, little bit before, but... Uh, these are where we keep all the molds, obviously. So anytime somebody calls us up and says, Hey, I need a new Gurner. We can make that here. Uh, the art department does as much in-house as possible. This is actually <laughs> where I started too. I oh, yeah? started in the art department uh, and then ended up moving around a bunch of times and, and got where I was, but here. They're gonna also do exhibit repair, as you can see, whenever possible. You know, they'll uh, they'll get little uh, repairs here and there it's that a, they can take care of. It's this a matchstick uh, helicopter. Matchstick helicopter, right? So this is something that the art department can fix. We'll bring in specialists if need be, you know, like if a mummy or something like that needs yeah. to be fixed up, you know, uh, that, that's a little different. But uh, but the art department is extremely talented and takes care of a, a good 90%. Hello. <laughs> so this is Charlie over here, Charlie sculpt in one of our new wax figures. Uh, so Is that Elon, you, Elon Musk? I was going to say, you can probably <laughs> guess what's going on there. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> so we've got an Elon going on over here. Which is pretty cool. He's he's going. Oh, we have Bill Gates. Um, Bill Gates was 100% uh, ba based off of, of a 3D print. Oh, look at all these teeth and eyes. Teeth and eyes, right? <laughs> So this is actually the, the normal process of how the wax figure is done. Uh, once, he's, uh, once we have a mold of it, we fill the mold with wax, let it dry for a certain amount of time, and then we dump the rest of the molten wax out and you get a nice, like, you know, decently thick yeah. layer of that. And then once that's done, we can go in through the back of the head and kind of carve out through the back and add the eyes and the teeth oh, and everything okay. like that, right? As we go this way, we're going to go into like the final stage of production. This is definitely going to be uh, what I call kind of the clean zone. As we continue forward, we get less and less dirty. This is uh, costuming, yeah. basically. This is a figure that we're actually working on. It's called Acro Brit. You've probably seen yes, it at some of the absolutely. museums. She's really cool. Um, this was the very first Ripley's figure, uh, minus the head, that was fully 3D printed. And then all the way down there, you will see the vice president. Uh, she is also almost done. Oh, Biden is completed. He is currently on display in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we always put uh, the wax figures in the Orlando Museum because it's right up the street. Just yeah. to get a, like a test, see how people react to them, if they think it looks like them or something like that. Uh, so she'll be headed up there fairly shortly. She's got her. Just finished her up. On. Yep. Just finished her up, but we're very happy. But you can see this is going to be our wall of billionaires. We've got wall of billionaires. Uh, not not completely, but we also do have a Mark Zuckerberg being worked. You saw oh, okay. the Elon over there. So there's so, Zuckerberg. So, so we have some Zuckerbergs going. I guess wall of millionaires. Billionaires wasn't the right term. There's only one on there. The other ones are in the other room. And as this though, you have the the mermaid boy. Oh yeah. So that's kind of a really cool old wax Fiji mermaid. Except for you know it, it's not your typical Fiji mermaid. Your typical Fiji mermaid would be a mummy half, right? Yeah. So this is more of just that really weird sideshowy, you know, half human, half fish. Yeah. That's really cool. I've never that, seen one like that. Isn't that neat? All right. Now this is the most secure area of the Ripley's, believe it or not, warehouse. Well, it's multiple places or multiple sections as you yeah. saw, but this is uh, the Ripley's archives. 
Um, we have hundred or a hundred year, actually more than a hundred years of materials uh, stored in here. I just noticed there's like a hundred shrunken heads absolutely, in little boxes absolutely. right there. So, so Ripley's, believe it or not, we will admit, we probably have the monopoly of shrunken heads. Um, to my knowledge, we have approximately 142 in our collection. Like kind of shrunken head cabinet display that we have oh, okay. over here. Um, obviously, these are just a few of what we have, just based off of what I showed you, but... <clears throat> a couple of other things that I would like to highlight uh, that I, I think might be new since last year are a couple of things here on, on this table. Uh, so we have uh, Teddy Roosevelt's top hat, oh, wow. which is pretty cool. Honestly, top hat, really cool. I love the case. I mean, I, I know that, that the top hat is cool, but that case, that traveling case that came with it is amazing. Oh, wow. That will keep As your you top can hat see, safe. It does have his initials here, TR, right there on the case. This is made out of beaver silk, um, mm -hmm. this hat. And you can actually see underneath here, we do have the presidential seal, that's right there, as well as his name right there on the rim, oh, of, the, on the wow. rim of the hat. Really cool piece right here, and then uh, also we do have a really nice picture of him in a very similar hat like that. Everybody knows Teddy Roosevelt was known for his hat. We have now entered the vault. All right. All right. Excited. I'm excited. So this is, like I said, where the creme de la creme of Ripley stuff is. So we're going to come in here. The door's going to close behind you, but I promise okay. that we won't get locked in. It is a little tight in here, I'm fully aware, but we have a lot of really cool stuff packed into a really small space. Over here, we got a couple of mummified items, oh my God. Uh, which is pretty cool. We have a mummified hand, a mummified foot, and a mummified head. Uh, the hands, or the hand and the foot are Egyptian. The head is Peruvian. Uh, so it's a little bit different process, but ultimately it is still mummification. Uh, I'm sure you remember what's in this box from the last time. Uh, I don't. What you don't? That? Okay, so I'm sure, I don't know if John showed you this the last time. So this here is actually the most expensive item. In the most Ripley's expensive collection. item in the Ripley's collection. In the Ripley's collection. This right here is the dress that Marilyn Monroe yes. wore when she sang happy birthday to John F. Yes, I actually saw this. Um, and it was on. The, it was they did an exhibit in Hollywood, and I went. It was on display in yeah. Hollywood. Yes, for a long time it traveled around uh, and, and things like that. So yeah, this, so this is, is the the Happy Birthday, Mr. President dress. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is Robert Ripley's original, believe it or not, baseball uniform. Yeah, what I read was that he they played against the original. They played the game against the original Disney animators. Yes, it, and it was all for charity. That's amazing. Yep, and and Ripley had a whole bunch of celebrities on his team, like like I said, Babe Ruth and, and that. And <laughs> so he brought a ringer. He brought Babe him. Ruth in. Yeah, he brought yeah. Brave Babe Ruth for a for a charity game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder who's gonna win that one. This is actually one of the original screen used lightsabers from Empire Strikes Back. Now, obviously, there were many made for production, right? You just don't make one, right? Oh, wow. You you make a bunch of them, right? So this is simply one of them. There were several made for production. Based off of our own research, we do believe that this is the one that was on Hoth, basically the saber in the snow. Uh, that's, so that's, that's so this is the saber that he used to kill the they used to kill the wampa. That that's what we believe. Yes, <laughs> exactly. This is the wampa arm chopper. Exactly. <laughs> so this is pretty cool. This is one of uh, I, I mean, just absolutely beautiful. Um, I will take it out real quick uh, of this case because there are two things I'd like to show you. <clears throat> Now, the first thing would be this piece right here. This is actually where the original on-off button would have been, okay? Yeah. Now, uh, this was actually a circuit board that just had a bunch of dots. Yeah. It's been, this thing's over 30 years old. It was a re It's been lost yeah. since then, okay? Another piece that I really want to show you is the Graflex logo because that is really the whole point of this and also what is right here. So the original lightsaber was actually made out of an early 1930s Graflex camera flash. And that's what this is. That's the Graflex logo, and so that's it right there. That is it right there. So this, they just, this they just piece that and said, right here. It's a lightsaber. And he added <laughs> a couple of grips. He added a couple of things to the bottom. They actually, during production, just put like a metallic tape over this. The Graflex logo is still there. It was just kind of covered up. Um, and he took essentially like a twelve dollar, you know, something and turned it into. <laughs> the world's most iconic movie prop of all time. 
This is the certificate of authenticity for the lightsaber from, okay. from Gary Kurtz. So uh, you may have actually seen this on CNN. It made CNN and a whole bunch of news articles, uh, but we decided to remain anonymous in the beginning. This is actually a lock of Abraham Lincoln's hair. You can see it right here on yeah, this letter. Chunk. Isn't that great? So this was actually taken the night of his assassination by the family doctor. Uh, the family doctor then wrote this telegram uh, announcing the death of Abraham Lincoln and wrapped the hair up in that telegram. The hair obviously had some sort of blood or brain matter on it, which then stained the telegram, oh. as you can see. There's blood stain. Oh my god. John Wilkes Booth sneaks up behind Abraham Lincoln, shoots him in the head, jumps from the presidential box down to the stage, yells some things in Latin, runs away with a broken leg, and that's how he killed the president. Yes. Okay, so that night he had two pistols. Okay, he had one that he shot the president with and then dropped in the presidential box. Those guns, which were called Derringers, were extremely, extremely, extremely unreliable at the time. So he carried a backup in case that first one didn't go off, he would be able to pull the other one out and kill Lincoln. When he jumped down off of the stage and yelled all that stuff in Latin, he dropped his backup pistol. It was found by a stagehand the next day, and we own it. It's in there? <laughs> so it's in there. So in here is John Wilkes Booth's original Derringer that in theory had about a 50-50% chance of shooting Abraham Lincoln that night. So this is the, the back backup Derringer. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Isn't it beautiful? It has his name engraved. It's so tiny. I too. know. You don't <laughs> expect that, right? Now it does have his name down there actually engraved he, has a, he had monogrammed his derringer <laughs> down there but this was found it was even displayed at ford's theater for a time <laughs> when i'm explaining it to people and they're like so what does the ripley's warehouse actually look like that's my explanation i think indiana jones meets oddities <laughs> <laughs> all right so we call this warehouse c as you can tell it's more protected than downstairs but less protected than archives this is kind of the middle zone. Uh, there are exceptions because obviously so many, you, you, so many two-headed cows up here. I love oh, it. Yeah. Well, you know the funny thing about the two-headed cows is we actually, I think we have a lock on that. You know, when the farmer has a two-headed cow, they instantly think Ripley's. Yeah. Right? But um, we know when the birthing seasons are, and and it's actually, <laughs> and we oh, know yeah. that based off of the calls because it'll be like we'll get no calls, not a single call, and then all of a sudden it'll be like two weeks and we'll get eight calls that are like, we have a two-headed calf. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, oh, it's birthing season again for the calves. Cow season. <laughs> Every time you open up a drawer here, you're gonna find something weird and unusual. Right? <laughs> I mean, they are just all sorts of different human. What are these, human bones? These are human bone flutes. Human bone flutes. Yeah. So just pull a random drawer open and open it's up a full of human. Open, open human. up a random drawer and we got our, our human bone flutes. <laughs> I remember this. This uh, this pecan last supper. This Absolutely. used to be in uh, St. Augustine, yep. I think. Years. This is a mummified head that came out of Europe. It was a medical teaching model. Now I'd like to make it very clear that when we say mummified, there are different types yeah. of mummification. All right, there is not necessarily just Egyptian. There are uh, different ways to do it. So this was a medical teaching model uh, in Europe around the late 1800s. I was able to get it and add it to the collection. Well, it was at, it was in our annual a couple of years ago, and then I got a phone call out of the blue from a guy who says. I have the other half. Oh, wow. <laughs> would you be interested? Of course we would be interested. So you acquired the two different halves separately? They were separate, years <laughs> apart, I might add. Really? As well. Yes, several years apart. That's amazing. And, uh, and, and so uh, it was obviously written into the contract that it had to be tested to make sure it was the true the other half and everything like that. But I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> I mean, a couple of years later, um, it's a ch uh, uh, Egyptian mummified childhood. Wow. Got some JFK hair clippings over here, which is pretty cool. Bought those from the White House Barber. <laughs> the White House Barber, was he like, he's got a side hustle going on? Yeah, he does, <laughs> actually, because I bought in hair from many a presidents, actually, from the White House Barber. I believe I have uh, Nixon hair, um, 
Clinton hair, Ford hair, all, all, all of them, all from the White House barber. Awesome. <laughs> and so yeah, he's got a little side hustle going on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> wait, wait, who's he? That's a pre-Columbian <laughs> skull, isn't that neat? That is. Oh. Oh, is that a jackalope? That is a jackalope, absolutely. So we're actually, uh, I host a uh, Ripley's YouTube show yeah. called Up Close and Peculiar. And uh, uh, so every uh, couple of weeks we put one out and I basically dive into an exhibit or a story, something like that. And uh, so coming up here, these are a few ones that I'm gonna be doing, uh, so little tease. We're gonna be doing vampire killing kits, which is gonna be a really cool one where I'm gonna go over the story of vampire killing kits and all the stuff that you normally find inside of them and things like that, so really excited about that one. We're also gonna be talking about sideshow and like taxidermy freak, or I'm sorry, taxidermy gaffs yeah. and things like that. So that's kind of why we have, we've got the jackalope, jackalope. The fur trout, uh, uh, a lot of people don't. Trout. This is our shelf of skulls. <laughs> this building isn't like haunted, is it? Well, you know what? It depends on who you talk to. Um, there are people here that will swear on their lives it's haunted. In fact, Efrain, the warehouse manager, he says that, it, that he's been here, he's heard things, it's haunted. Um, until it happens to me, <laughs> I'm going to say no. Uh, I would love would love that'd be cool i mean that'd be really cool to see something or whatever it is or you know type of thing but until it happens to me uh i'm my answer is no so uh <laughs> just like you got like you got like 300 like severed heads all of these all right so yeah we've got everything from you you, you know carved kapala skulls you, you, you know uh ancestor skulls elongated skulls Anything that's in this plastic usually has hair or human skin still on it. That's why it's all, mm. yeah, that's why it's still uh, uh, in a bag. Over here we have um, my personal favorite skull, which is back here. Because this particular one, is this the right one? Yeah, this particular one um, has the brain inside of it. Still. What? <laughs> and uh, it's got a brain in it's it. It's got the brain. Now it's shriveled up. It's so it's, it's got like a petrified brain well, rolling around inside of it. You can't get it out. It's stuck. It's inside of here. I'm, I'm going to rattle this for you in a second, but it, it will not come out of the bottom. It, it's it's a pe it's a petrified brain. I can hear it rolling Listen. around in there. That's the brain. Okay. <laughs> Is that That's not just the craziest thing? Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? Absolutely. It's just like skulls like staring at me from <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Now uh, you you know about shrunken heads, rip yeah. is, is pretty good at this. We found a uh, um, an artist in Australia that actually uses the same techniques and does it with animals. So uh, actually here we have some animal shrunken heads. So is that a rabbit. So we have a rabbit and a pig. So these are used using the Javaro shrinking techniques. That is correct. Now those animals did animals. die of natural causes. Again, I want to make sure that I stress that none of the animals are uh, are killed for any of these processes. Right here, we actually have one of JFK's back braces. So oh my this gosh. is John F. Kennedy's back brace. Now, this is cool for a few different reasons. And what I really want to emphasize is this is not like the back braces today. It's going to be hard to portray that through camera. If I put pressure on this, I cannot bend this. This is solid metal. All right, I cannot no give. do No this. give whatsoever. Exactly. So when Kennedy would wear this, he could not lean forward. It just, this would not let him uh, move forward. It has been noted in the doctor's report that when Kennedy arrived at the hospital after being shot, he was wearing a back brace extremely similar to this. And doctors to this day have said that had Kennedy not been wearing this back brace, they think he would have had a much greater chance of survival because he would have been able to duck and cover after that first shot. So, oh, he couldn't protect, he couldn't protect he, himself. He could not physically bend over after that first shot. The first shot didn't kill him. Yeah. He may still have died from it, yeah. but a lot of experts completely agree that had he been able to so actually he couldn't, go like he this, he couldn't hit the deck, yeah. He could not hit the deck because he was wearing this uh, a back brace like this. Oh my gosh. He had to sit upright, and that's when the second shot hit. Gosh. Oh, look at there. There One she is. One of my right? favorites, yeah. Right there he is. Love the Fiji mermaids. I love these guys. Oh, it's so cool. We have a really, this is, it's not, I wouldn't consider this a, a Fiji mermaid, but we do have more of a, like, a humanoid mermaid. Okay. Same sort of sideshow gaff, so you know. one. But, but it's just a bigger there. one right there in the back. 
So this is something I definitely want to show you because it is one of my favorite pieces because the longer you start to think about it, the more it starts to kind of okay. like, you're like, wait, no, that really would have been bad. So uh, so I want to show you a couple of things first. Okay. This is your average human femur, okay? okay? <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is your average human femur. femur. It's about 15 inches long. This is what's going on in your leg, okay? We've all seen this. This is a mummified Peruvian broken femur that the guy survived and his leg healed and he walked around with the rest for the rest of his life two inches shorter on one side oh my with that knot gosh. with that knot in his leg. So this bone is literally snapped in half and then just sort of grew back together that with is a correct. big mass that is of correct. bone. Ah, that's so he was two inches shorter on one side. Oh my this is God. about two inches shorter. So he, and he walked around with that lump of bone in his leg for the rest of his life. So nice. he lived long enough for it to heal, at least. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, otherwise it would have just been a broken bone. Look at the size of this. That is our fur bearing fur trout. Covered trout right this there. This is the biggest fur fur that we have. Fur. Yeah. Oh my God! Beautiful. Love them. Is there another Fiji There's mermaid? Another Fiji mermaid. This one scales a little bit. Oh wow! So everybody can tell right off the bat what this is. This is Albert Einstein. Yes. All right. This is a wax head of Albert Einstein. All right. Now, if you think of wax figures in the world, the number one that's going to come to your mind is going to be Madame Tussauds. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. knows that. She was over in Europe. Okay. The American Madame Tussauds was Catherine Stuber. Yeah. Okay. She did sittings for everybody. If you were famous in that time period, you sat for her. Disney, Charlie Chaplin, I mean, they all did it, right? So this is one of her wax heads. The cool thing about this is this was taken directly off of Einstein's face. She actually did a life cast of him. So this was taken from Einstein, his exact face, and then after she made this master copy, he signed the back of the neck to Catherine, much love, Albert Einstein, where she kept this head in her personal collection until her death. And then it ended up going over to one other wax museum and then to us. Yeah, actually, I believe this or not, I actually saw that. Did you? Saw this when it was in, it used to, if I remember correctly, it was in the Cave City, Kentucky yes, Wax exactly Museum. Yes, that's exactly where it was. <laughs> yep, that's exactly where it was. Yep. I think that's a really cool That place. is super cool. I think that's neat. Rooster up there, yep. safely wrapped in bubble wrap. It's the two-headed rooster there, then the two-headed uh, snappy turtle, and then the lamb sticking his tongue out there. Look at all these. Uh, looking over the warehouse here, you can just see all these treasures. Here, yeah, these are all. I guess these are all being packed up for the new uh, Ripley's overseas. Uh, this warehouse is more for long-term storage mm -hmm. and things that are not going to be going anywhere tomorrow. Uh, it's also used as a staging area most times uh, so that we can go ahead and uh, and have some things on display that are maybe a little bit larger. Uh, this is a match, matchstick Absolutely. car from Fast and the Furious. Absolutely. So this is a Dodge Charger, 1970 Dodge Charger from the Fast and the Furious movie. This is made by Pat Acton in Iowa. He's our matchstick guy. He makes us about one matchstick model every year, give or take. So this takes about complexity. a year for him to make? Yep, give or take on the complexity, you know, yeah. the, you know, some of them. But he makes them completely interactive as well. Um, so, you know, each one has little tiny uh, interactives such as oh, the wow. tire oh. spinning. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, that was the vehicle that went out and got him. There's Elvis being run over. UK taxi there. And there's the shark here's from the shark Key West. Right yeah. We have our sack of Berlin walls over here. Berlin wall is something that we have a oh, lot. Oh, these are all Ber Berlin this wall. This is all slabs. Berlin wall. World's longest motorcycle over here. <laughs> Look at that. So what you're looking at here is a half concept that we're working on right now. It's a full concept, but um, we have all of the, as you can see, these are all Ripley animatronics, yeah. right? Um, and they've been in a lot of our locations and things like that, and they are super cool, but they just don't work the way that they did on day one yeah. anymore. 
but they're in that weird stage where we all think they're really cool and don't want to throw them out, but we just can't keep them in the attractions. So what we did is we've got them all back here and we are slowly but surely trying to make an animatronic boneyard gallery that's gonna have them kind of like half on, half off, twitching. That sounds like the coolest thing you know, I've ever heard. <laughs> like, like it's gonna be really cool when we're done with it. But uh, it is obviously a concept still right now and, and, and whatnot. It's the moose. It's the moose, yep. Uh, but, but ultimately a lot of these animatronics are gonna be all set up in one area. We're gonna open some of them up so you can see like the solenoid belts and like the actual mechanical insides of them and things like that. Probably take some faces off some of them just to really give you the full effect. It's supposed to be a little creepy. We want this uh, to look a little weird. Is that Winston Churchill back there? So uh, here's a question for you. Are yeah. you familiar with the can opener bridge? No. Oh yes. Uh, eight was it? Eight the foot eleven. Foot eight bridge. Eleven foot eight. Sorry. The eleven foot eight bridge. Okay. A couple of years ago, they raised the eleven foot eight bridge. Not by much, because there's a, there's some railroad tracks across the top, but they raised it to like twelve six or something like that. Yeah. They added an extra eight inches or whatever. When they did that, they removed the crash beam from the original eleven foot eight bridge. You, you know, yeah. Like the can open a bridge. I bought it. Is it here? It's here. Can I see it? It's in pieces, but it's here. <laughs> Can I see? It's right here. Oh my gosh. So this is the 11, this is the original crash beam from the 11 foot 8 bridge. You can go on YouTube and watch them taking it down <laughs> and everything like that. You can also go on YouTube and watch it destroy a thousand Exactly. <laughs> Love that. You know what the best part about that is? The guy who films those, his name is Jurgen or Jurgen or something like that. Sorry if you're watching this and I mispronounced your name. Uh, <laughs> Great guy. He actually, every time somebody runs into it, into it, he runs out and picks up as much wreckage as he can. <laughs> so this entire thing is wreckage. Ah! <laughs> so I bought the beam, and inside here are like pieces of Penske truck, and like. Is that got a, is that got a lid on it? Uh, no. Can I can I peek? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I might even be able to get you a stepping stool if we really need to. Okay. Yeah. I can see. <laughs> These are all victims. Yep. Those are Eleven victims. Foot eight. So thank you for joining me here at the Ripley's Warehouse, the epicenter of all things Ripley, where they, uh, where, where all the the exhibits are, cre are created, or all the exhibits are bought and brought in, and like, like I said, they're shipping out a new Ripley's. I said it was not not in America. They're starting a new Ripley's overseas. I couldn't disclose yet where that location would be, but uh, so many cool things to see. Um, so many things. As I said, I've been here before. I feel like. There was so much new stuff, so much stuff that I hadn't seen on my first visit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe to the channel. It'll let you know when new videos uh, arise. And uh, if you want to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. Just three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that just helps keep this train on the tracks. This boat in the water and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.